Hi. I know it's been about forever ball since I've been on the retreats, but um, besides all the crazy stuff of COVID in, 20, in 2020 and 2021, there's actually been a lot of shift in our lives that have just made me reprioritize things. Um, big things is like we moved to a new home and we also now have a six week old baby. <laughs> Uh, so the reason I'm making this video guys is because I know that all of the other videos I have are about usually about weightlifting or um, macronutrients recipes with macronutrients, but I've actually made a huge 180 from that sort of lifestyle because of the reprioritization I decided to do with the um, effort of having a baby. Um, so long story short, and I won't go into those details now, but um, we've had multiple pregnancies and we were finally blessed to have our baby girl this past February. She's the cutest freaking thing. If you want to see her, check it out on Instagram. I've posted a few photos. I don't want to make her a highlight of this content because I, I don't know. She's a baby. She needs to do baby things. <laughs> you know, baby thoughts and baby chilling, not baby <laughs> social media. <laughs> but anyways, um, so like I said, we had multiple pregnancies and a lot of the shift that I had decided to make was one because of COVID um, and making sure that I'm trying to keep my family safe and trying to have a healthy pregnancy, but also because um, with multiple pregnancies, I felt, although it's, it's not my fault I, as the carrier of the child, I felt responsible and somewhat guilty. Um, I know it's not my fault, but I, you can't help but to feel guilty. And so I wanted to try to do as many things as possible to mitigate any further issues um, with with our baby girl and, you know, any pregnancies we had. Um, that being said, I just kind of want to talk you through, guys, some of those big changes and why I made those changes. And when it came to um, weightlifting, I decided to stop lifting entirely after our first pregnancy. Um, actually, it was after our second pre pregnancy, I decided to stop weightlifting entirely because although, again, I know there's so many pregnancies where there is healthy weightlifters or people that are weightlifting while they're um, pregnant or doing intense like workouts, I felt like there was a correlation of the, the day that I had my last workout and the last unfortunate day that we had. And so that just scared me and that made me feel guilty. And again, I don't think it was my fault necessarily, but you can't help but to have it way heavy on you and just think if I can not do something and it prevents another thing from happening, then um, I'm going to do that. In fact, um, on our third pregnancy, our doctor told me to not um, work out. So I stopped weightlifting and I primarily focused on walking and stretching and I focused more so on meditating because I also wanted to have as much of a natural birth as possible. Um, I tried my hardest not to do an epidural. <laughs> That's another story. And so that was one of the big shifts. Now, you guys know if you follow me on Instagram that I've competed in bodybuilding competitions. It is something that I want to do in the future because it is such a fun sport for me, but it's just not my priority right now. I'll get back into it. Part of the symptoms I got from pregnancy too is my left hand is really numb and sort of tingly. And I feel like if I'm going to overexert it, I'll injure it more. I actually have to see a neurologist for it. And it would devastate me if I injured it more and I couldn't pick up my own baby. So I'm not going to lift heavy. And in fact, of course, I have to progressively overload again to make sure I'm doing things really safely. When it came to activity as well, you know, again, I just focus on what I thought was going to be healthy for me at the time, not only physically, but also mentally. And I also stopped more strenuous activities like um, baking for dough well. You guys know that I have a business to it well. It's protein, cinnamon rolls, and although it's baking, baking for a large order, large orders is really taxing. You will have 14 hour days for multiple days, 11 hour days, no sleep, etc. etc. Um, and I just wanted to minimize my stress. And also, I stopped doing it well temporarily because of COVID. I couldn't guarantee social distancing and make sure that I was not. Uh, getting COVID and affecting my family or the baby. When it came to my nutrition, I also took a complete 180 there. You guys know as a bodybuilder, you have to track your macros. I did still stay 100% vegan because I do, I'm do. i vegan for the ethics more so than I am for the health. 
Um, and if you guys are wondering if you can have a healthy baby on a vegan diet, you absolutely can. You can see our baby super healthy. All her blood work came back all normal. Super happy baby. But again, back to the story. As a bodybuilder, you count macronutrients. I did a 180 and I stopped counting macronutrients and I just ate what I thought would be right for the child, for the body, for the baby. I eliminated most of my caffeine. I probably had maybe four cups of coffee through my entire pregnancy and then some light teas along the pregnancy. I also obviously stopped drinking alcohol. I um, also eliminated stevia. The reason I elim eliminated stevia is because a lot of cultures actually use it as a contraceptive. And so, and there have been studies on rats and animals that show that um, when given stevia, they actually have um, lower birth tendencies or don't give birth at all, maybe. Um, but there are studies out there and it just, I'm, I know I'm not a rat, but for me, if it was just something that's easy for me to cut out, why not do it, right? But if you guys are thinking about doing that, um, as easy as a, uh, it sounds, what you'll find is there's stevia in almost, well, in a lot of different foods. You would never have guessed. One of the harder things for me to find was a vegan protein powder that didn't have stevia. That was freaking hard. That's delicious, by the way. I did find one, it's New Zest. I'll link them back down below. I think they have vanilla and chocolate. They're pre pretty freaking delicious. And the texture is super good too. So that's New Zest. Um, the other thing that happened uh, while I was pregnant is I got gestational diabetes. <laughs> for those that are not familiar uh, with gestational diabetes, it's a diabetes that happens when you're pregnant. They, doctors don't really know why it happens, but it happens. And in most cases, it just goes away after the pregnancy. Um, you do have a higher chance of getting diabetes after your pregnancy, so be mindful of that. And you do have a higher chance of getting gestational diabetes again on your next pregnancy, so be cognizant of that as well. Uh, I did have insulin, nighttime insulin. I think I started out two units at night and then went up to three and then back down to two because I was eating pretty well. But then Thanksgiving rolled around, the doc was like, hey, do you want some mealtime insulin just in case you want to get a little bit crazier in one of these holiday meals? I was like, mm, fine, okay. And then I got a little too dependent on it. And I was like, oh. And then after the holidays, I was like, oh, deep dish pizza, things I haven't had in a while, you know? And then uh, you get, I got, well, I got a bit dependent on it for a little bit. And I overestimated how much insulin I needed on a couple of occasions. And that meant that I started to black out, got cold and hot at the same time, started sweating, started shaking, um, you know, vision was going, my mind was totally blurring, and it was just scary. That happened a couple of times, and after that, I was just like, no, I'm just going back to, I just need to go back to watching my food, because I know how to do that, right? And it's not worth the consequences of having low blood sugar, because I was just wanted to eat whatever the heck I wanted to um, and just depend on insulin. So that's something that happened to me um, during my pregnancy. Other than that, I did, because of gestational diabetes, I did have to focus on the carbs I ate um, and the sugars I ate. One thing I really found out guys, and you know, everybody says whole wheat is better, whole wheat is better, um, brown rice is better, brown rice is better. Um, it could not have rung more true when I would test my blood. I had to test my blood four or six times a day. Um, sometimes I would overdo it just because I needed to know. Um, it could not ring more true. If I ate the same amount of carbs in white rice versus brown rice, my blood sugars would be way higher with white rice than brown rice and it would metabolize or you know get higher faster. Um, than with brown rice. Same with um, white flour bread versus whole wheat bread. Something you guys um, might want to keep in mind, even if you don't have diabetes, it just goes to show how much better certain foods are for you because it's less processed and kind of goes through your body a little bit more naturally. At least that's how I would like to think about it. I'm, I'm not a doctor or anything. I just, I'm a girl that likes to eat and likes to lift and have a baby. <laughs> um, but as for nausea and morning sickness, I only actually got morning sickness once. I didn't really get nauseated. I was incredibly tired through my entire pregnancy. So, you know, not lifting was another re another good reason to not lift is because I was just super tired and I didn't want to push myself too much. 
Um, but uh, I hear the baby crying now. I'm distracted. <laughs> Where was I? Oh gosh. Okay, I don't remember where I was, but another thing that actually has happened to me before I turned vegan, way before, even in high school, um, this happened to happens to me. Um, so before I was vegan and before I started bodybuilding and before my pregnancy, I have these fainting spells. They are quite random. Um, sometimes it's because I get too hot and sometimes they're just completely random, right? Just faint. Luckily enough, because it's happened so many times, I can catch it before I actually faint. I can feel the symptoms and I just lay on the floor or lay on the couch and put my feet up and then I'm fine in a couple of minutes. Doctors don't know what it is because by the time it's done, you can't really test anything. You know, you can't time when the fainting is going to happen. So during my pregnancy, it actually happened twice. And I know for sure that it wasn't diabetes related because I had just eaten, just tested my blood sugars and then I started feeling fainty. So that's something else that I had to um, endure during my pregnancy. Um, and that actually affected how I decided to not get it, get the epidural towards the tail end of the actual labor. If you guys want to know more about that, just let me know in the comments below and I'll, I'll share that story with you. It's quite entertaining, I think, in my opinion. I don't know. It may not be for other people because you were the one in labor. But, oh, I know what I was saying. I didn't have nausea and I only had a um, morning sickness once. So I didn't really factor those things into my food, but because I had to watch my sugars and my um, carbohydrates, I did rely more on fats to satiate some of my cravings. I love nuts. I love nut butters. Um, I also gave in to, you know, garden desires or, you know, beyond meat desires, impossible burger desires. Do I think they're the healthiest? No, but I was doing this balance of um, eating to support protein needs, making sure I was kind to my gestational diabetes, wanting to satisfy cravings. Um, and so sometimes I lean towards those things. Uh, and sometimes it was more so than it normally would on a you know non-pregnancy day. And uh, it just kind of is what it is. Has my physique changed? Yes, absolutely. Um, and that's one thing that I had to really try to think about and, and give focus to before we got pregnant is my physique is going to change. If I'm not going to work out, my muscles aren't going to be as prominent. They're still going to be there. I'll have to build them back up again. Not a big deal. It'll happen again. Did I have the hard days of thinking, gosh, my physique is changing? Yes, absolutely. I'm not going to lie to you. There's days that I do feel like that, you know, there's... There's a couple of days where I weighed myself and I said, oh, holy guacamole, I shouldn't weigh myself because I get into my head when I see the number on the scale. I know that with the amount of weight I've gained, which is approximately, I'm taking my best guess here because I didn't weigh myself too many times, but I think when I got pregnant, I was probably 144. Mind you, I am 37 years old. I am five feet, four inches. The highest that I weighed myself at was 183. So I gained approximately 40 pounds. Um, which is more than the doctors wanted recommend. They think they recommend like 25, 30, 35 pounds, something like that. So it's not too far off. And I'm confident I'll get it back to, I'll get back to where I want to be and feel comfortable and get back into competition mode. Um, but I know this video has gone on for so long, but I feel like there's so much that I want to share because I want to be helpful for you guys, especially if you're thinking about transitioning from a very fit lifestyle, a very like muscle focus, muscle building focus to something else that you're transitioning to. Maybe you're choosing to get pregnant. Maybe your friend, your, your wife, your partner is looking to get pregnant and you need to support them. Um, you know, you just got to focus on what that big priority is. And physiques changes will, will, will physiques will change. And I can tell you that, Giving birth has been the biggest performance of my life. I don't care how many stages I've been on, how many stages I will be on. Giving birth and giving life is something that is so incredible that I wouldn't change it for anything. Um, all those times where I, I'm sleepy and tired and delirious and wondering when I'm going to get my physique 
quote unquote back? Um, will certain things snap back? You know, those momentary thoughts, they're nothing. They're nothing because, I mean, she's just amazing. She like makes me melt. And she's random. She's got this cutest cry. And when she cries, she goes, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Anyways, I'm rambling too, too much, guys. I have so many micro stories that I can tell you of all the different things that I've sort of just blabbed on about now. If you have any questions, let me know. If you want recipes of things that I cooked, I mean, kind of cooked when I was pregnant, let me know. Oh, I made this freaking amazing, like somewhat protein, whole wheat, walnut pancake. Oh, those those were actually really nice for my gestational diabetes. I got to get pancakes in there with not really worrying about my carbs too, too much. Um, so let me know if you want those. Um, and I did just start uh, working out. I'll show you the gym that my hubby, he took so much time doing research and setting this thing up. He's freaking amazing. But he set up our gym and I feel so blessed because now in our home we get this um, gym that we get to use. Of course, I haven't really used it yet. Today was... I played with it a little bit, but look at that. Look at that, baby. Yeah. There's even like leg press, um, I don't know, for your feet, push it up. <laughs> Smith machine, squat racks, a whole, not even nine yards, freaking 10 million yards there. Um, and so I feel really blessed and fortunate to have like what we have and to have the experiences that we've had. Um, if you have gone through a miscarriage and if you're struggling, um, keep at it. Keep your spirits high. Um, I'm there with you. My thoughts are with you. Miscarriages happen. And the thing that I know now is it happens more frequently than we want to talk about. And that's why I'm being open about it. I know I haven't said too much about them. They are traumatic. They don't get easier with each one. Um, but I'm there with you. That's my life change for now. I'll continue to upload videos on things that I think are helpful for you. But again, if you guys you know, find something that you want to ask me, let me know. All right, guys, I think this video is long freaking enough. <laughs> Have a great day. Bye, guys. See you.